This is all the ephemera that I made in December in the Ephemerember series. And now it's time to give them all a proper home in a junk journal. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. If you have never heard of Defemorember, it's a December daily series my talented friend Louisa Heinzel and I hosted last December, in which we used prompts to create junk journal ephemera using simple supplies. You can find both Louisa's and my playlist for this series linked down below in the description box. So we made all of this goodness together. So now it's time to make a junk journal as a permanent home. The first step in my process is I'm going to go through all of the pieces and decide what I actually want in my journal and what I don't think will work well in this journal so that I know what I have so I know what the bulky pieces are I know what size I'm dealing with and that way I can then decide what my journal construction might look like. I also still have some golden chocolate foil left over which I can definitely add to the journal so that will probably be used in some way. All these little bits here I'm assuming I will use. I can decide that at the very end that they don't really matter in terms of constructing the journal because they are small and they will fit anywhere. So I can just put those in here. So these are all the tickets we made. These are these little tiny seed envelopes and our tea pocket with a magnet. So those are all not a problem. Same thing here for these little charms we made out of paper clips. Here's another one of those tea bag pockets. We have our paper clips here that we can clip onto any page. So those are no issue at all. This of course is going to be our piece for the cover as I've mentioned and this is Rita's beautiful card with her letter attached in the back so that will slip into the front like this so this is going to be glued down on three sides so that's definitely going there this is easy to add and works with the style I have this probably this belly band, yes, I think will fit nicely. This one here I actually don't like at all. And I'm trying to decide why I don't like it. Probably because it's too busy and there's not really a focal point. Yeah, not liking this. So this won't be able to go into this journal. I'm so sorry. Our buttons will probably find a place, some of them anyway. This envelope with our ledger paper inside will find a place. It's not too bulky and I think it goes well with my theme. Same thing for this here. I think that will be fine. This one here I don't see going into this journal. It's just not the style I want for this journal. It doesn't really fit with the rest in my eyes. So I will use that in something else. This one I love a lot, this button card, but it is very bulky. So I will have to think about how to include this. So this is something I need to pay attention to. We'll keep that in the front. This one here is going to be interesting because if you have seen our Defemorember wrap up, the one where Louisa and I are reviewing the whole experience, Louisa mentioned that she would love to see me make a journal only having animals and these sitting paper dolls on them so i have this other one with the raven this one here so that's another example because when i made this one there were so many options of the book i was going through where i finally picked the raven that she thought it would be a great idea to make a journal just with these kind of images so i'm thinking of actually doing that so that means these won't go into this journal they will have their own separate special journal as it looks <laughs> so these can go on the side 
This again is one of those pieces that I don't think will fit in the style of journal, but I do love this little booklet. So I think I'm going to just keep the booklet for this journal and add this to another journal at another time. This one I think is fine for this one. Tickets will work, that's no problem. Then we have all of our tea cards here. I'm sure some of these will work. I'm not sure about the style. I might cut the white part away or I might color the white part in some way or grunge it up, but I think those are fine to go in there. There's some more tickets. These two elements are a little bulky, but I think they should be okay. So I will add these in here. These two are fine. This was when we made our own Rolodex cards. Here we have the second button card. I think it's fine. It's not overly bulky. This is like one of my favorite pieces. This will definitely go into that journal. These here I think will be fine, but I think I will add them separately because like this with the brad, it is quite bulky. So we have three of these here. And we have the fun back sides. This tuck spot will definitely go in there. I love this one a lot. We have this bird one. It's a pocket. I actually don't know about this one. I mean, it's cute, but does it really fit to the rest? I don't know. I'll put it in here as a maybe. This one, yeah, I think it fits to the style. Louisa said he was creepy because of the eye. <laughs> I kind of like it. I like it that it that he has the 13 which is like a you know a bad luck thing and it kind of looks like a spooky halloween kind of horror pocket <laughs> i like that this is like one of my very very favorite pieces this will definitely go in here this is one i actually made after the fact this was actually i think a test print or something for a stamp that I made in a video for Meg from Meg Journals. She had a video hop on January 1st and I showed how to make tree stamps, specifically this tree stamp. So I will link that video for you as well in case you want to see how I make my tree stamps. These four tuck spots, three actually only, <laughs> I made after the Defemember series these, of course, you will recognize instantly if you've watched Louise's Defemember videos. This was heavily inspired by what Louise did in her video. So this was the prompt using staples. So I really like how these came out. Thank you again, Louise, for this amazing inspiration. This CD pocket is really quite bulky. It's a maybe, I'll put it in the pile anyway. This one should work. This is my biggest piece, but I think it will be fine. It actually tore in the meantime, but that's no problem. I can fix that. So he'll go in here. The snow woman. <laughs> I had so much fun creating her, but I don't think she will fit in this journal. So she will have to go somewhere else. No idea where. You will succeed. Mm. That's a maybe. And then I have some things that I actually... Oh, wait, no. First, I have these. So these we made when we were creating our tickets. So maybe I'll use some of these as well. So I'll stick those in there. Yeah, and now we have some pieces that I made not during Defemember, but partly without filming and partly in other videos. So I have these two works of art. <laughs> I made these sometime last year. They are obviously not masterpieces, but I think they would be cute in a junk journal. So maybe they will go in here. <laughs> this was a trial of sketching a bird kind of in a more realistic way. So yeah, I don't know if I will use him, but 
potentially again not a masterpiece but he's mine so maybe <laughs> and these here you have maybe seen in the video where i made my layered paperback junk journal i wanted to add these to that junk journal but i ended up not doing that because i didn't think the style worked and the more i look at them so these are all paper bags the more i really don't like the coloring i did here i don't know what what is going on there but i do love the collages themselves so i think what i will end up doing is just tearing the collages out and i think whoops <laughs> i think they will work beautifully in this journal because the style is exactly the same Yeah, so I love the collages themselves. So yeah, I think I will do that. And then this one is a tag that I made in another video recently where I used Meg's Junk Journal January prompts, but in a different way and a very fun way. And I ended up making this tag. So if you want to see how this came together and why it is the way it is, check out that video. That is a fun one. But I think this totally works for this journal. And that's it. That's all we have. Now, I think it makes sense to consider the biggest and the bulkiest piece to help me decide on what kind of journal and what kind of cover I will be making. So the important pieces here are this very bulky button card piece. Then this one here, which we said is the largest piece. I mean, this one here is long as well, but I can always cut that one shorter, so I'm not worried about that one. And then, of course, I need to consider my cover piece. So that's this one. I have been procrastinating quite a bit in making this specific journal because I have high expectations for myself in making this. I want this to be special and at the same time I want to try something new. I always get bored with doing the same thing so I always love trying new things but of course trying something completely new and having high expectations <laughs> creates a bit of anxiety obviously it can go very wrong and then everything will be ruined so we will just do it anyway and see how it goes and hope that it will work out <laughs> the inspiration that i took for the decision i made on the kind of journal i want to make is from two previous journals i have made i have videos on both of these journals this one was a very recent one. This one was my latest design team project for the Digital Collage Club. So this is the layered paper bag journal. And what I love about this one is the different layers. I think those are super fun. And by the way, I will link this playlist for you below in case you want to see how this is made. This was inspired by a video I've seen from my wonderful friend and design team member, Rhonda Winstead. Hi, sweetie, if you're watching. And the second thing I'm taking as inspiration from this journal is this kind of binding. Although I don't know if I will do exactly the same binding, but having all the pages bound together on one end and then having these flip is something that completely surprised me because I did not think I would like it because I didn't think the pages would flip nicely. But even though these are paper bags and so all of these are double pages, they still flip very nicely. So that's something I want to explore further with this journal. And this one here is another design team project for the Digital Collage Club. This is a while ago and I will also link this below for you. I love this one so much. I love the format. I love that I've used packaging paper and I love this wood piece and the binding and just the whole style of this. So I'm definitely going to use some elements that are in here for this new junk journal as well. I love all the different textures and that I used paint and quotes and my handmade stamps here as well, the bird 
a lot of stitching i just love that oh this was actually not packaging it was actually a cut up paper bag i see that now because of this here <laughs> So that means for my new junk journal, I want a lot of layers. I want different sizes of papers peeking out. I want a lot of texture. I want to just try a new style and, and new techniques. So of course, the first thing I want to think about is my cover for this beautiful magpie to go on. I have taken out four books, <laughs> which all happen to be in a green color range for some reason. That was pure coincidence. Both of these are plant books. This is natural history, and this is again nature themed. They're all beautiful vintage books that are mostly falling apart already and from which I have already used some bits. Don't you love it when you find old postcards in books that you buy secondhand? This is an Edelweiss printed in Switzerland. That makes sense <laughs> so cute and this has gorgeous images as well so maybe i will even add some of the original images of the books i'm using i don't know yet we'll see then there's this one this is actually a school book this is still in pretty good condition so i'm not sure yet if i'm going to actually use this one or not but it would work i will need i think more than two covers for this with the way i'm planning to do this this one here is pretty bent so i think this one is not going to be great but maybe the back side don't you just love this grungy back side <laughs> it is completely falling apart which i love i don't feel bad about tearing this apart it has amazing illustrations in here love that love that also the black and white ones love these this is one of those books with the very smooth vintage pages gorgeous and then finally we have this natural history one it's an austrian one from salzburg i think i got this at the flea market also has some beautiful illustrations oh my god look at these poppy flowers beautiful But I'm actually, oh, look how cute. Actually, the insides don't matter at the moment. I'm, I'm thinking about the cover. So the size of my cover should be a size where I can easily fit him with the card picking out. So this would be a great size. I was definitely considering this one for a cover. Don't like this red. I would cover that up somehow. And then I could use the back cover as the back cover but i think i also need at least two more book covers inside <laughs> i know this is going to be a weird journal so yeah i'm not sure about this one because this one is still in pretty good shape this one might be a good option because it's bigger and this would fit on beautifully so that means this one would peek out from this one which is actually perfect so I think I will use at least three cover pieces, maybe a fourth one. Three because, because I have so many items that are not completely flat. So I think it will be better to have more sturdy pieces in between, especially when I have something bulky as this. Or maybe I should just keep this and put it on another journal cover. I will still think about that. So my first step is to cut these books apart by taking out the inside most of you will have seen this many times if not it is super simple you need a sharp knife like a craft knife and you just open this and then just cut away the end page by going in between here and just just cutting down all the way So that's the front cover and now I do exactly the same thing for the back side. 
There, so now I have my text block, block separate and I have my cover separate. And I always keep these end pages separate because since they are blank, they are perfect to add in journals. So I have a whole stack of these in different sizes, different shades. And if you are patient, you can try to get this netting off here. This is what I sometimes use in my collages. For example, you see pieces here and here. This is from Book Spines, but you do need a little bit of patience. Usually it's easiest to just take the signatures apart. This one I think might not be so easy. Oh, actually this one works as well. It's hard to get a big piece usually, but it, you know, every, every binding is different. And here we have a beautiful piece to use. Very dimensional, very textured, awesome for collaging. Even this small one can be used. <laughs> and since I'm not going to be using the spine, I don't like the color in this combination anyway, I'm going to cut it off just with a pair of scissors. This is just book cloth, so it's usually very easy to cut. And you can also use this piece in your collages because this is great. Maybe we can, yep, we can even take this cardboard off so that we just have the book cloth. Even this might look great in a collage. So you can use every part of the book. Now you can cut these as clean as you want or leave them as rough as you want. That's totally up to you. So I have these two panels now and I will do the same thing for this book. This one is already like completely falling apart. That makes my job very easy and it makes me feel better about taking it apart. <laughs> yeah, so the back I don't even have to cut off. That has come off completely. Oh, this is going to be a nice piece as well. Looks like it's coming off on its own pretty much. So this is one of the rare bigger pieces. Since most of my collages aren't this big, I will probably be cutting te or tearing it up anyway, but it's nice to have a big piece like this. So this is the cutoff book spine. And again, I can just very easily separate the cardboard from the book cloth and use this in collages. So now I have four panels to work with. This one is going to be the cover on which I'm going to add my magpie. And I don't know yet what color I want it to be. I don't want it to be this green because then this feather doesn't come out and this is not one of my favorite colors anyway. <laughs> so I'm going to have to do something with this. I don't know what yet, but I think I'm going to start by sanding this down a little bit. I have the sanding block from my hardware store. You don't need to have it. You can just have a little bit of sandpaper or you can even probably do this with a good nail file. On a side note, it would make sense to wear a mask if you're doing this inside because there is a lot of dust. So then my next step is to cover this with some white gesso. It's probably not absolutely necessary and you could probably use white paint as well. I just think it's a good foundation to have and will bring out any color that you put on next better. I don't know yet what color I'm going to add. This is a cheap thin gesso. You can use whatever you have. I also have thicker ones. I might add a second coat, I don't know yet. And I think sanding it down first is also not absolutely necessary, but I believe that the paint or the gesso just stays on it better if it's not a smooth surface so that it won't chip off with time. So I've quickly dried this and I just want to add another coat of gesso. I think it cannot hurt. It just also helps to protect the book since it's not in good condition anymore. 
Maybe you're like me and you feel overwhelmed at constructing a whole journal. Then maybe it helps you to do what I do, which is really to think in baby, baby steps. I have no idea what this finished journal is going to look like at all. I don't know what this cover is going to look like. I don't even know what color I'm going to put on next. So when I hold this here, I am now thinking I would actually like to have a little bit more texture around here. There's of course many ways you can achieve that, but one way to achieve it would be to add like some crinkling. And I'm going to try doing that, adding this kind of, I don't know what you would call that, parchment paper. In German, we say Butterbrotpapier, which is literally translated into paper for bread with butter. So kind of like a sandwich paper, lunch paper. I don't know what you would call it. I guess it's like a parchment paper. But you could use tissue paper. You, maybe you have a sewing pattern. Any thinner kind of paper would work for this. So I'm going to crumple this up. Then I'm going to adhere this with wrinkles. You can use Mod Podge, you can use thin down glue, you can use matte medium. I'm going to use transparent gesso, which I think should work as well. This one is from the brand Amsterdam. I like this because it's completely matte. It will dry clear, of course. So I'm just going to add this to my book cover over the whole cover. Then add my crinkly paper and make sure that it gets wrinkles while I'm adding it. In the middle, I don't need them because they are going to be covered anyway, but I do want them around the edge. Making sure it's stuck down, especially around the edges. And then I'm going to go over everything again. Don't want any air bubbles. Now that this is dry, I see that there's not enough wrinkling around the edges here. Because when I put this over, it covers most of them. So I definitely want more wrinkles going on here and here on the bottom. So I'm simply going to add more paper. And you can just keep doing that, adding layers and layers until you are happy with the amount of wrinkles you have. Okay, I quickly dried it. And when we look at it again, we can see that this looks much more interesting now. Yeah. Another way to achieve texture would, of course, be to add some stenciling or to just add some texture paste with a spatula. That would have looked really cool as well. But I didn't think of that. <laughs> and now I want to add some paint to this. And looking at these colors again, kind of want to stick in this color range. I will, as base, probably use <laughs> this jade green, surprise, surprise. But I think I might also add either or both of these two acrylic paints. So one is the phthalo turquoise and one is a metallic green. I can put it straight on the board. So obviously this is going to become collage fodder here on the side. <laughs> Once this is dry, I'm going to take my phthalo turquoise and take this round brush and dry brush over it so that my wrinkles come out better. I don't want to have too much paint on my paintbrush for this. That was too much. Okay, this is not working like I want it to. 
I think I have way too much here. Let's see if I can still get it off. Yeah. Great, it's everywhere. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Yeah, that's more what I'm looking for. You see this? That's what I want. You have to have a very light hand, otherwise you're just gonna paint everything in that color. Again, the middle I don't really have to worry about. Trying to be a little darker on the edges because I want this distressed look. I think this way it gets a lot more dimension as well. And next I want to add some more distressing. I cleaned my brush and I could either now distress it with a dark or a light color. I want to see what it looks like if I distress this with white. So again, I'm going to use gesso, but this gesso from Golden is a lot heavier. So I want to try that. It has thickened quite a bit actually. Yeah, this is very thick, so we'll see how that looks. Just experiment, see what you like. You can keep going over your piece until you're happy with it. Don't be afraid to try new things. I don't know if I'm going to like this. By adding different layers, I'm trying to create some more depth and interest. This is starting to look pretty good, but I think I want some dark in the background, actually. I will add a little bit more white first. Then I want to add some dark brown, so I'm going to mix some raw umber with black. To try to be very light-handed, I can always add more pressure as I see what it needs. Using circular motions. And if I see I don't like this at all, I can just go back and cover it again with my jade green or my turquoise, my white, till I am happy. Thing is, if you always stick in your comfort zone, you always do what you know works, you're never going to grow as an artist because you're never going to learn new things, new techniques, if you don't experiment. This looks like a hot mess. I realize that. <laughs> oh no, I got some black here. Okay, I'm going to have to find something to cover that up with later. I will worry about that later. So now it's fairly dark. So maybe I want to add some more, hmm, or maybe some gold. Just thinking, should I add white first? And then gold. You see how this magpie is shimmering? That's because maybe you remember I added this gorgeous I think the green one here on him. These are these metallic shimmery watercolors that I got from Maureen. I, maybe I can try to add it here or maybe I can try to add, I don't know actually, maybe the white one. Oh wow. Wow, that's a huge change. I did not think this would be that visible. That is so cool. Maybe I can just mix these colors and then have different shades in different areas. I do want the paints underneath to show, so I don't want it to cover everything. This looks so interesting. I am loving this right now. Mm-hmm. I think we are getting very close to a result that I'm liking. Look at all this wonderful 
shimmer we have now. So this is all dry now. And what I also want to try is taking this forest moss straight from the ink pad and going over the top to highlight the wrinkles more to darken those. Louisa, I hope you're liking this. This is your favorite color, I know. But it's still going to be my journal. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Louisa wanted to have this journal. That's a huge honor for me because I'm such a huge fan of her journals. And that she says she wants this journal without even having seen it before is just like the biggest compliment for me ever. So since my top layers are both water soluble, I'm going to have to seal this in. Usually I would seal this in with my clear gesso, but I'm afraid the colors would move. I could kind of gently dab it on, I guess. I wish I had a sprayable fixative, but since I don't, I could use hairspray. I would add a few layers of hairspray, or should I just try to add this? Because this, of course, would be better. Decisions, decisions. Maybe I should first decide if I'm happy with this as a final result. Yeah, I think I am. I think this looks pretty awesome should we just try this maybe first try it here on the inside where it doesn't really matter if the color moves yeah but it's definitely moving a lot no i can't do that nope 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 i'm gonna dry this and then use hairspray in the meantime it's the next day and I have sprayed this cover twice with a thick layer of hairspray. As you see here, it is quite shiny. So that is something you need to take into account if you use hairspray. So now if we add this, I think this looks very nice. And as you remember, I messed up here and I got some paint on it. So I found a solution for that. I got a delivery just in time yesterday evening. I've seen these both on Andrea's channel, Artie Mays, and on Louisa's channel, and I just had to splurge and get them. So these are these beautiful leaves. Tim Holtz, of course. This is the number, 665559, in case you want to find these. They are so beautiful. I just completely fell in love, and so I had to try them out. And it's the perfect solution for here. So I took some of my collage fodder, and I ran three of the leaf dies over those and then I backed it with cardstock as well because they would have been way too flimsy and I just love them and as you can see I edged them I used my carbon sketch pencil and then I used my water brush to fan out the edges and as you can see there's also some orange here which I made by just adding some rusty hinge Distress Oxide right over it, just going over it like this. And then I also sprayed this twice with hairspray, so they are a little bit shiny as well. But I think they're just gorgeous. I think they are the perfect addition here now. So I was thinking if we could add these somehow like this, kind of like an extension to his feathers. And then I could stick the bigger one maybe down here. What do you think? I'm loving this. So I think that's what I'll do. This here, I have a feeling looks kind of flat. So I think I also want to add something on there. Hmm. I'll first try the rusty hinge. really hard to get to <laughs> I feel like that woke the whole thing up a little bit and I also I'm going to add my forest moss distress ink around the edges here I just want those a little more grungy Hmm. 
much better. So now I can finally glue this pocket down. So I'm just going to glue this on the three edges. I'm going to use textile glue because this is wallpaper and I think the textile glue works best with that. Okay, and then I'm going to add the leaves using my art glitter glue with the fine tip, but not gluing the leaf down all the way. I'm going to leave the tip free so that it can just move a little bit. I wish I could put them underneath the feather, but that is stuck down well, so <laughs> that's not going to work. And then, of course, he needs some gold splattering. You knew this was coming. I'm using my Van Gogh 803 Deep Gold watercolor. I am, of course, covering his eye because I don't want to blind him. Since I have some gold left on my brush, I'm just going to do some mark making here on the black which is going to be, again, some awesome collage father for a future project. So now I can add Rita's beautiful card in here and it can stick out so that we can see the notes label there. So I think this is the final cover. I was thinking about whether I should add like urban nature on it somewhere, but maybe not maybe on the inside maybe not we'll see i can still decide that but i am super happy with this it is very dimensional of course <laughs> probably the most dimensional cover i've ever made but it's okay i think it will be fine and i'm actually reconsidering my decision about the kind of binding I wanted to do in the kind of journal. I think it's just going to be too bulky. I might revert to the old fashioned, <laughs> it's not old fashioned, <laughs> to the regular like five hole pamphlet stitch kind of binding and just have a regular binding. Let's decide that in the next episode. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this cover episode and I hope it gave you some inspiration for your own covers. Hope to see you back here in the next episode. Love you guys. Bye.